Hey what's up guys Adam here and since I did a overpriced tech 2.0 video I thought it would only be fair if I go ahead and do a underpriced tech 2.0 video as well. So any further ado guys let's go ahead and get straight into it. So coming in number 5 we have the i7-5820K. Now once upon a time it was quite difficult to find a processor above 4 cores that was also at a very good price and wasn't a Xeon processor. But now with the new introduction of the X99 platform back in September 2014 we now have a wide range of different uh, processors above 4 cores like the 5820, the 5930K and also the big boy the 5960X and this is a really good opportunity to go ahead and build a future proofing system that is above four cores and will be a, a good game machine as well as a good all-round video editing and multi-purpose machine as well. So I know some people might argue but when it comes to building a workstation a Xeon Pro set is better to use and in some cases yes it might be better to use but the general home based consumer is not really going to be concerned about using all the necessary bells and whistles that are going to come with the Xeon processor which are going to be mainly used for wide geographical servers as opposed to just having a home based workstation for video editing and gaming so they can pretty much get away with just using an ISO processor for the home and not really going to be using the additional technology that's going to be of course available for a Xeon processor. So coming in number 4 we have the AMH 4K panel. Now, as I mentioned before last year we're really going to start to see a lot of these 4K Korean panels popping up all over the market and indeed as you can see here they are and this is a 40 inch or it's technically a 30 inch panel and it's actually using the same uh, panel as the Philips so it's kind of like a, a grade B or grade A minus panel that, that Philips don't really want to use so they pass it on to these Korean companies where as I mentioned before they tend to reuse the panel and correct them if need be. So this is going to be a 40 inch panel and it's going to have a similar PPI to a 27 inch 2560 by 1440 p panel and the price of this panel here in the UK comes in at around about £365 which is a pretty good price to pay for a 4K panel even at this stage and it doesn't really have any of the cop out 30Hz tier nonsense it is a 60Hz panel at and it has a PLS panel so it kind of sits in between an IPS panel and a TM panel so it's a PLS, PLS technology that's used in the panel so you're going to have very very good viewing angles and a you're going to have kind of a low a millisecond response time but it's not going to be of course low as a TM panel but as I mentioned before if you want to go ahead and see a full review of this monitor you can go ahead and check out MW Technology you can go ahead and check out Tech Syndicate's video on this panel as well I'll leave the links in the description down below it's a fantastic monitor for the price and it's really giving some of the lower end 4k panels even from Dell uh, a good run for their money so be sure to go ahead and check out this monitor it's definitely a really good monitor for the price so coming at number three we have the Vivitar f1.4 35mm lens. Now this lens has a lot of different names, it's also called the Rokinon lens if you're going to be in the US or, the, or Canada, but this is a fantastic lens uh, for your collection. I mean, it's, when we normally think of camera lenses, you think of really, really high prices like from Sigma and Canon. This lens comes in at around about £284, which is a fantastic price, almost a steal for a lens of this kind of calibre. So I'll definitely go ahead and recommend to go ahead and check out this lens uh, if you're trying to look for an inexpensive prime lens. That's also going to give you some really, really crispy bokeh and crispy video shots as well. So that's why I put on ahead and put the Vivitar 35mm f1.4 lens on this list as number three. So coming to number two, we're going to have Sony Movie Studio 13. This is going to be a fantastic video editing software for someone who's making an improvement from using Windows Live Movie Maker or in some cases iMovie. This is going to be a fantastic overall video editing software. It's almost like the smaller brother of uh, Sony Vegas and it's going to be giving you quite a few uh, options, a few presets, quite a few codecs uh, for your money. Of course, you're not going to get all of the top end codecs that you're going to get in um, Sony Vegas, but you're going to get, be getting everything you pre pretty much need to go ahead and start editing good quality video at a low end price. That is why Sony Movie Studio 13 comes in at number two on the list. So coming in number one is going to be the Focusrite Scarlett Solo Recording Package. It's going to be a fantastic package because you're going to get an XLR microphone, a preamp, you're also going to get a set of headphones and an XLR cable all coming at £130. That's a fantastic price and you don't, you don't have to worry about uh, concerns about compatibility and things. it's all going to be everything you're going to get in the box. It's pretty much ready to go ahead and connect straight to your computer and at £130 that is a really 
real steal of a price. So I'll definitely go ahead and recommend that if you're going to be someone coming from using a USB microphone or even a 3.5mm microphone that you had before. Anyway guys, pretty much been the top 5 underpriced tech list 2.0. Hope you found it useful, hope you enjoyed it. Anyway guys, it's been Adam here. Thank you for watching. Take care and of course I'll see you guys in the next tech video. Bye for now.